All right, well, today we have Tom Parkin, uh, Colorado filmmaker, Boulder High graduate, Boulder High longtime native. <laughs> Your whole life you've been here in Boulder County. Right? Moved here in 1984. 1984, yeah. right, right. And, uh, and your latest film, uh, Len Berry, one, two, three. I almost want to sing that. <laughs> um, and it's so great to have you here. Thanks. And it's, uh, you know, being our, it's going to be our first program next week uh, mm -hmm. when we're filming this. And it's even a great help getting people to submit and to make this a, a, a venue for filmmakers um, to, to show their stuff and to uh, get feedback from an audience. So super appreciate your help with that. Oh, I love that you're doing this. I think yeah. uh, any venue in Boulder County to show local filmmakers work is, is great for everyone. Right. So thank you for doing yeah. this. Yeah. Good. It's, not, it's good to start with the best. <laughs> we got you here. That's so No pressure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when, when I first heard about Len Berry, one, two, three, I was, who? Right. And, and I'm older than you, and I was around in the 60s, but probably more psychedelic British invasion type stuff is when I started to listen. <laughs> sure. But the, the Len Berry thing, and then I uh, went back and I watched the trailer. It was super catchy. Right. Um, and uh, what, and it's, it's interesting to me that you chose a figure that I wouldn't recognize, right. you know, from rock and roll history. Sure. And what, what brought you to uh, Len Berry as a topic for your doc? Well, it was an accident. In fact, I call the film an accidental documentary because uh -huh. um, my day job is producing sort of healthcare related programming. Uh -huh. um, and I happen to be in Philadelphia producing a piece for an assisted living facility. Uh, okay. It was just sort of like a marketing piece. And part of that production was interviewing the residents that lived in this facility. Okay. And so I was in a conference room that he set up for me, and they would bring in um, some of the residents just to talk about their experience living in this place. And the last person that came in was this highly energetic, mid-70s guy. He kind of limped in, but he was like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. My name's Lenny. I'm like, nice to meet you, Lenny. All right. Wow. All right. We'll just have a seat here, put a little microphone on him. And I started asking him questions about living at this facility. I said, yeah, the food's great here. You know, I have some problems walking. They got good physical therapy, and I just love it here. It's terrific. You know, I just needed like a 10-second sound bite, so I got yeah. what I needed in just a few minutes. Uh -huh. I said, well, thanks. And I started unhooking the microphone. And I said, you know, Lenny, you're, you're pretty good at being on camera. Have you done this before? Uh -huh. And he looked at us, well, you know, I had a bunch of hit records back in the 60s. <laughs> I said, wait, what? <laughs> but, but are you serious? He goes, yeah, yeah. I had, some hit I had, a, I had a band called the Dovells, and... Like, okay, sounds vaguely familiar. I don't know. Uh -huh. And then I did a quick Google search. I'm like, I know this song, One, Two, Three. Right. I'm like, yeah, I've heard this before, just in the pop culture yeah. ethos, you know? Uh -huh. And I said, hey, can I, do you mind if I ask you some more questions? And he said, sure. So we sat down and we, he let me spend a half day with him. He told me his whole life story, showed me his gold record and all these, these things, and I had no idea. You know, it just I just accidentally met him on this shoot, and he told me his whole life story. And from there, you know, I, ha I mean, gosh, I must have about three hours of him talking on camera. Uh -huh. and I, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I didn't know if I was going to make a short film or just a news piece or whatever. But, you know, I was in the middle of many other projects, so that footage just sat on my computer for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. COVID hits. All right. You know, and then I was like, okay, well... You know, still doing other projects. And then um, I got the call that he passed away. Mm -hmm. I said, well, now I got to do something with this footage. I mean, you know, let me just take a look at it. It was COVID. I didn't have much to do. So um, got through the footage. And I remember when he was talking, it was very nonlinear. He would jump from oh. decade back and forth. And I knew when I was shooting this, this was going to be hard to edit whatever I choose to do with it. Yeah. And... Um, but yeah, once I sat down and started just sort of figuring out, okay, well, he's talking about this here. I can make this into a linear thing. My initial cut was an hour and 15 minutes long. Uh -huh. But he was talking so much about stuff later on in his career that there was zero B-roll footage. Right. And any filmmaker out there is going to know, you don't, you don't want just someone talking to the camera for an hour and 15. So I just opted to stay with his heyday, which was the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And... Um, found lots of footage online, finding the B-roll footage. He did provide me with some photos and some 
directors and whatnot. But yeah, it worked out. Yeah, no, I thought it was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And he was so fun to just listen to talk to. It's like one of those things where you're just like, this is a piece of rock and roll history that I've just stumbled upon. Dude, that is, that's incredible. That's almost like a, a film itself. And then yeah. you start to wonder about all these other people. And you'd be like, well, these people with these amazing pasts, mm -hmm. and they don't, they don't run around advertising this. No. no, no. You just, just meant, you asked him, have you been on camera before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. In front of millions of people. He wasn't going to tell me otherwise. Yeah. I mean, he just told me, like, wait a minute. Okay. Wow, wow. Well, tell me more. That's and, I great. mean, that's just always the filmmaker brain. It's like, is there a story here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, well, that's, that's terrific. Yeah. And then, so you had the, the whole thing. And I was watching it, and I was kind of like, you know, because in, in a sense, you also have the, you know the arc of somebody like him, their career, that they're going to, they hit big, and then, you know, right. things kind of drift away, and they try to capture the old glory, and I'm mm -hmm. just wondering where it's going to go. Um, and then, but you nailed the most poignant ending, I thought. Um, and it, it did that, it, when you filmed the sequence mm -hmm. of, that you finished the film with, um, did you go like, I got my ending right here? Yep. Or, because cause that's, that, that's settled with me. Yeah. And I was just, oh, that, that's amazing. Right. So obviously I don't want to give away the ending. Right. But, uh, you know, I think most filmmakers, especially documentary, when you're interviewing someone, I'm already editing in my head. Right. I, I can use that. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that ties to what he said earlier. Oh, okay. Blah, blah, blah. But I knew I'd be ending with that particular thing uh -huh. you know because uh, we're storytellers right and every story needs a beginning middle and end okay so um you know without that you just got you know talking like okay yeah right so um you know i knew it started early in his career during his high school that's when the band started mm -hmm. and so that's i just knew i had to come back to that somehow right. and he already said it so yeah you know yeah yeah was it was beautiful. Thanks. Just being a former teacher <laughs> just hit me. Of it's course. Just kind of like, right, oh, right. It's so nice. And yeah. it was just easy. I mean, I've, I've worked on many documentaries in my time, but when you have a, a subject like him, just he was so charismatic and just told his story. And it was, I just, it was such a joy to sit, just listen. I only asked him like maybe five or six questions. Uh -huh. He just talked. Oh, right. There was a few times where, you know, he'd jump up, like I said, he jumped around different time periods in his life, I'd have to say, could we go back to when you, you know, first did the recording? Uh -huh. Can you talk about that day? Do you remember the day in the studio? We go, oh, yeah. And he just goes off. Uh -huh. And it was great. Right. So, okay, well, I got something here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you definitely nailed it. Did they, does he have family that um, has, have seen the film? And yeah, stuff? so yeah. Uh, soon after um, I finished the film, he, uh, I got a Facebook message uh, from Spencer Barry, uh, Spencer, uh, Spencer Borisov. His okay, real name. Right. So Len Barry is his stage name. Yeah. Uh, Leonard Borisov is his real name. Uh -huh. But Spencer Borisov from Florida messaged me on Facebook. Hey, I understand you just made a film about my dad. Huh. I'm like, oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, How are you doing? And so I, I sent him the link right away. And he, within, it's a 20 minute film, 30 minutes after I sent it to him, he said, this is wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, this is great, I oh, can't great. wait to show it to my wife and everything, this is great. I'm like, oh, well thank you, because I wasn't yeah. sure. He had really nervous, like, I hadn't even submitted to any film festivals at that uh -huh. point, so I was a little nervous, like, oh, what if his, his son hates it or something? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, what do I do? Yeah, like, oh. yeah. Um, but yeah, it worked out, he, he liked it, so yeah. I got lucky there. Yeah, and now you've submitted it to film festivals and it's doing very yeah. really well. So I actually completed the film in November of 2021. Mm -hmm. I started submitting to film festivals uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was lucky enough to get into the Boulder International Film Festival, our hometown festival. Um, I've been working with them for 14 years doing various things. Mm -hmm. I, do, I, do the, I produce their trailer every year. I do their on-screen graphics. I'm their cinematographer, so I document it every year and and I you know submitted many times in the past and but this is the first time I actually got in and I was just so happy to to get it in and you know get to yeah. you know your friends and family get to come see it you know yeah. like in your own town like yes yeah, so yeah. I, it was really fun and then it's shown at many other places and that was uh, last year and oh gosh I think he's probably played in at least 15 festivals around right. the country um, and 
various places. I was in London, uh, Paris, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, You've been traveling around with it the whole time? Or? Well, no, a lot of this was during COVID. Yeah, so a lot right. of it was on screen, uh, online uh, festivals. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, I haven't really. I mean, I've really just um, been to the Boulder, like in, in person, Boulder. Um, there was a screening in Longmont um, mm -hmm. last month. Went to that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was fun. No, <laughs> hit that one out of the park. <clears throat> it was fun, yeah. So what, what are you working on now? What did your... Uh, Next project. Well, I'm um, currently working on a, another documentary film. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a title yet, but uh, it is basically, it's got nothing to do with music. <laughs> it's uh -huh. a, a Christmas-based, a, a Christmas-themed documentary. It's about one man's quest, yearly quest, to decorate the perfect Christmas tree. Uh -huh. And that's all I can really say about it right now. But okay. um, we're just wrapping up... Uh, the production, and I'll be starting editing uh, right away. So hopefully in the next month or two, I'll have a uh, another film to show. That's great. That's, I think, uh, just the Len Berry thing, and that's just like focusing on one person. Yep. And um, you know, just be able to tell their story. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty pretty cool thing. We're all storytellers. We're just trying to tell the good ones. You're like a one man band. There's so you edit, you shoot. You do. You travel around and do uh, Colorado Health Health Matters. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how many people out there do the whole thing. You know, you always <laughs> see like in the credits, you'll see like lighting and, and grips, and you got all this stuff. But it's just right. probably just you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Video made by me. Uh, yeah, right. I feel bad. I see yeah. all these other. Thank you, Tom Parkin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I just do. You know, <laughs> just one time. Just what's it all like? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, between, you know, my day job is producing Colorado Health Matters, mm -hmm. which is a, the half hour um, healthcare news program uh -huh. every Sunday morning on KDVR Fox 31. Right. Um, please watch. Yeah. Um, that's my day job. And then, um, so television production by day, filmmaker by night. Uh -huh. um, but I've been a filmmaker for a very long time. Um, I became a freelance videographer in 1999, and I've been doing it on my own ever since. Uh, and before that, it was uh, I had one job out of college, and I was at a video production company in Denver. Okay. So this is all I've ever really done. So uh, I think I'm getting pretty good at it. Yeah, I, I think pretty soon I might be pretty good at it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Someday soon. I know you, you can you can make money on one of these routes, right? With Colorado <laughs> Health Matters. So the short films you're spending a lot of money, probably. Well, that's what we do, right? Yeah, well, right I mean, yeah. that's that's our art. Sure. That's we're artists. You know, yeah. that's our passion. You yeah. know, um, I got to do something creative, right? Uh, you know, at least once a year, mm -hmm. um, and that's you know, keeps the juices flowing, right? And who who are your influences? Like, when who do you look at as far as a filmmaker and just oh. go, wow, and just I, how do I nail that? that you know, feeling? there's a long list. There's you know, well, growing up as a kid, I wanted to be the next Spielberg. Okay. And I set that goal for myself. Okay, he was 27 when he made Jaws. Uh huh. Well, I, I hadn't. I, that that came yeah. and went a long time ago. Right, 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 well, right, right. Yeah. You know. But then, I mean, I love independent film, but I, I also love the big blockbusters. James mm. Cameron's one of my favorite directors. Oh, like, okay. The guy can make entertaining movies. I right. mean, there's not one movie he's made that I was like, that that, that sucks. No, they're all very entertaining. Uh huh. Um, but then I, I love anything from like. Goodwill Hunting, as Gus Van Sant made that mm -hmm. movie. I mean, this is yeah. going back to like the '90s for that. These are sort of low-budget, independent films that, because mm -hmm. in the back of our mind, we're like, "Well, we, I can make that." Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember seeing El Mariachi in at the United Artists <laughs> Theater in Boulder yeah. when it came out. That was Robert uh -huh. Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez's right. first. It was his college film. Mm -hmm. that apparently, he sold blood to make. You know. Yeah. And I was sitting there watching it with my filmmaking buddy. Uh, I was in high school at the time. And I'm like, we could do this, <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, so that's where that came from. The, the movie that influenced me the most was the movie Airplane in 1980. <laughs> and I remember seeing that, not in the theater, but we rented it when I was mm -hmm. older. And the room full of us laughed. I'm old to have seen it. In the yeah, theater, sure. Right? Yeah, well, exactly. I would have been seven when that came yeah, out. Yeah. But uh, just seeing all these people <laughs> laugh. Like, mm -hmm. oh, why can't people to do that? Wow. Yeah. Or just, not just laugh, because that's, that's a comedy, but, you know, just get someone to be emotional watching a film together 
and I just, you know, that's why when I turned 16, my first job was at a movie theater here in town, uh -huh. and I worked there for five years. Mm -hmm. I was just always about movies, mm -hmm. so it's just in my blood. That's all wow. I've ever done, and um, so many influences. Uh, I would say the most direct influence was um, a friend of mine who was three years older. He was a film student at CU while mm -hmm. I was in high school, and he'd let me work on his films. Uh -huh. and, then later on in life, professionally, I was his director of photography, cinematographer uh -huh. on a couple of his feature-length films that wow. he made. Uh -huh. And then uh, his name's Troy McGatlin, and he's out in L.A. Um, so my influence are like close friends and the big filmmakers. Do, do, do people hate watching movies with you because, because you note things and go like, oh, why did they do that? Oh, continuity problems? <laughs> Yeah, my wife is kind of like, stop it. Oh, I, I see the haircuts that are different because they had to do reshoots later. Uh -huh. Like, I can re remove myself from right. the, the filmmaker to just sit back and enjoy just it. Just enjoy it, take yeah. it in. Because I enjoy every aspect of it. I love seeing, I can tell if a movie's bad, but like maybe one of the actors is really good. Mm -hmm. And I can just like, oh, that was, you know, the movie was in, but they were great. Or, yeah, yeah. or you can tell the screenplay is really good. Mm -hmm. eh, the acting's not so good. Mm -hmm. Or, you know. Yeah bad sound, bad lighting, right. but other aspects are good. So I can see, I mean, there are many movies that look beautiful, like the cinematography is just top notch, but you're bored out of your mind. Right, right, so, yeah. I will say this trend of like three hour movies these days is getting a little out of hand. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I liked it when it was an hour and a half. Yeah, it was you know? Babylon, Two hours was long, you know, like, okay, I'm yeah. like, come on now. Right. So that's why I've not seen the latest Avatar. Three hours, yeah. I, I don't know, you know. And so on the opposite end of that spectrum, the short film genre, mm -hmm. um, which is a real niche, you know, it's, it's uh, what is it about short films mm -hmm. and kind of how cool they are? And, and if you go to film festivals, you have the features showing, but mm -hmm. a lot of times the most popular tickets that are going are the, the short films where people will show up and watch two and a half hours of different shorts. Well, I think, yeah, no, you hit it the nail on the head. I mean, there are so many feature films I've seen that should have been a short. Right. Like, that could have been a short film. The problem is, where do you show short films? That's why this is so important, what you're doing. Oh, good. We have so little venues to mm -hmm. show our short film, other than on YouTube, and you, know, you hope you get people watching it. Um, but as a community watching short films, this is what we got. Film festivals, what you're doing here, um, so I really hope this takes off because I, I mean, this is fantastic, right. and I will always be promoting this sort of thing. Good. Especially, uh, I work a lot with um, the Boulder County Film Commission, and we're looking for this sort of stuff to promote mm -hmm. and really get the word out there about local filmmaking, and and um, so this works out very well. And it's free. It is. You can and it's it free. free. <laughs> what? <laughs> that film freeway thing you get up fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. I and don't you know, know that... your chances. Be yeah. like, oh, I'm oh, gonna submit and yeah, be like, oh. Mm -hmm. Submitting film like Len Barry. I submitted to a lot of places. It, it, it adds up after a while. Like, it okay. does. Well, Tom, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you, John. Long line. Good and luck with the film, the yeah, festival. Yeah. The, Hopefully you'll be able to come out and be in the audience and that's watch the plan. different filmmakers and Absolutely. Do, do what you can to to promote this. <laughs> we're we're working on a monthly free beer here with the different breweries here in town. Okay. They'll provide beer and uh, so it should be a, it should be a, schmoo a schooze, a schmooze, a schmooze fest. A schmooze fest. <laughs> a schmooze Not fest. a snooze fest because these are good fest. films. Yeah, these are going to be we want good just films. the good ones. All right. Yeah. Right. All right. So, well, thank you, John. Okay. Thanks a lot.